favorite vase? She always says, don't play ball in the house. Pork chops and applesauce. <laughs> Need that swell. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hey, you guys. <gasps> oh, my no! Welcome to Here's the Story, a Brady Bunch podcast. Hey, I'm not going to tear this thing apart. It's my favorite show. Hi, I'm Kevin Maley, and this is my podcast about the Brady Bunch. Making its debut on September 26, 1969, the same day as the release of the Beatles album Abbey Road, the pilot episode of the Brady Bunch is called The Honeymoon and was filmed a whole year earlier. Created, produced, and written by Sherwood Schwartz after the success of his show Gilligan's Island, it was originally titled Yours and Mine and would not be greenlit by a studio to go into production for three years until a similarly premised movie starring Lucille Ball and Henry Fonda called Yours, Mine, and Ours was a hit in theaters. The first actor cast was Susan Olsen, who played youngest daughter Cindy. She had previously acted on television and in an Elvis movie. Shirley Jones was offered the role of the mother, Carol, but she turned it down, only to later take a similar role on the Partridge family. Her best friend Florence Henderson was asked to audition, but she couldn't fit it into her schedule as a Broadway actress, so Joyce Boulefant was cast in the role. Eve Plum was cast as middle daughter Jan due to her resemblance to Boulefant. She had previously acted in commercials and TV shows like Lassie. Sherwood Schwartz wanted Gene Hackman to play the father, Mike Brady, but the network refused because at the time he was an unknown and insisted on Shakespearean actor and star of the show The Defenders, Robert Reed, to have the part. Christopher Knight was cast as middle son Peter due to his resemblance to Reed. Barry Williams, who had been on shows like Mission Impossible and The Mod Squad, was cast as oldest son Greg, and Mike Lookinland, a commercial actor, was cast as youngest son Bobby. So the father, Mike, was played by the actor Robert, or Bob for short, and the son, Bob, was played by the actor Mike. Maureen McCormick, who has an older brother named Kevin, like me, won a beauty pageant at six years old, acted on shows like Bewitched and I Dream a Genie, and was cast as the oldest daughter, Marcia. Monty Margitz was cast as the housekeeper, Alice Nelson, until Florence Henderson got a break in her schedule and was able to audition for the mother, Carol. They liked her audition enough to boot out already cast Joyce Boulefant from the role, but in so doing, knew that they were losing the more comedic actress. So to compensate, they replaced Monty Margitz with two-time Emmy Award-winning comedic actress from the Bob Cummings show, Ann B. Davis, in the role of Alice. Sets were built on Paramount Television Stage 5, adjacent to the stage where Sid and Marty Croft were filming H.R. Puffin Stuff. And the theme song for the show was written by Sherwood Schwartz and Frank Duvall and performed by the Peppermint Trolley Company. We start the episode with a photo of the whole assemblage of nine cast members on the stairs in their house and the words, The Brady Bunch, in color. Mike Paul Brady is an architect, a widower, and a single father of his three sons, Greg, Peter, and Bobby. They have a live-in housekeeper named Alice and a dog named Tiger. Carol Ann Tyler Martin is a divorced woman living with her parents, her three daughters, Marcia, Jan, and Cindy, and their cat, Fluffy. We meet all of the characters, get their backstories, see the wedding, and honeymoon, all in 24 minutes. Mike and Carol have perfect chemistry and look very happy. Fluffy the cat has a doghouse and is never seen or spoken of in the series ever again. I assume she must have stayed with Carol's parents. Speaking of which, they say they will visit often because they only live 20 minutes from Mike's house where the Bradys will be moving to after the wedding, but are also never seen again. And after this episode, Mike's house is never seen again. Sometime between this and the next episode, Mike designs, has built, and they all move into the house they will live in for the remainder of their lives. I bet Greg wasn't happy about that, because he had his own room in the house they live in in this episode. In the end, all of the kids, pets, and Alice join the parents on their honeymoon, and everyone is happy, except for the snooty resort lodge concierge, Mr. Pringle. Boy. 
sister and Mrs. Brady to sweet age. Thank you, Mr. Pringle. Oh, you're welcome. The show is cheesy, but I laugh through the whole thing. Maybe it just puts me in a good mood, like Christmas. I think I've always wanted to be Mike Brady. He seems like the most perfect guy ever. And he must have adopted Carol's daughters, because they all get the last name of Brady. They successfully sold this pilot to the network and got a deal for a season of shows. The critics hated it, as they always do, but kids loved it. It would last for five seasons, have many spin-offs, and go into syndication, where somewhere in the world, the Brady Bunch has played on television every day for almost half a century. Until next time!